The U.S. launches another airstrike against Houthi targets as the Iranian-backed group is expected to be relisted as global terrorists. And the next Republican debate is canceled just days before the New Hampshire primary. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is the Morning Rundown. Today is Wednesday, January 17th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. The United States carried out another airstrike against Houthi targets in Yemen on Tuesday, destroying four anti-ballistic missiles. This was the third military strike by the American forces against the Iranian-backed group since last week's U.S.-led attack that struck dozens of Houthi targets. Central Command says the latest strikes destroyed four anti-ship missiles that pose an imminent threat to merchant vessels and Navy ships traveling through the Red Sea. Later in the day, Houthis claimed responsibility for an attack on a Greek-owned carrier. According to U.S. officials, the Biden administration is planning to put the Houthi rebels back on the list of terrorist organizations, marking them as specially designated global terrorists, which would impose financial restrictions on the group. The Houthis had been designated as a terror group back in January of 2021, but they were removed from the list over concerns the move would stall peace talks and impact civilians of Yemen who have been part of a nearly decade-long civil war. The Houthis say they will continue to attack ships in the Red Sea as long as Israel presses on against Hamas. On Tuesday, the countries of Qatar and France announced they brokered a deal between Israel and Hamas to deliver medication to Israeli hostages in exchange for additional medicine and aid for Palestinians living in Gaza. President Biden has invited congressional leaders to the White House for a meeting today to push for more aid to Ukraine and Israel, efforts that have been stalled in Congress for months. The president is expected to meet with House Speaker Mike Johnson, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell in an effort to get more funding passed. Back in October, Biden requested $106 billion in funding for Ukraine and Israel, but Republicans want immigration reform at the U.S. southern border to be prioritized and passed alongside any additional funding for Ukraine. The White House says negotiations are moving in the right direction. The Senate has voted to advance the stopgap spending bill that would extend government funding deadlines to March and avert a government shutdown as this week's deadline is approaching. The Senate voted 68 to 13 Tuesday night. This marks just the first step toward passing the two-tiered bill in the chamber. Without the spending bill passing both the Senate and the House, the government would partially shut down when funding for some agencies runs out on Friday. For other agencies, funding ends on February 2nd. If the measure passes both chambers, it will mark the third short-term spending bill passed by Congress since September. The next Republican primary debate that was scheduled for Thursday in New Hampshire is no longer taking place. ABC News announced yesterday its decision to cancel the debate after saying Donald Trump and Nikki Haley never responded to their invitations. It would have only been Ron DeSantis on the stage. Earlier in the day, Haley released a statement saying she would only debate President Biden or former President Trump, who is coming off a victory in the Iowa caucuses. Trump has not participated in the previous debates, citing his commanding lead in the polls. The former president is expected to attend the second day of his defamation trial in New York today before heading back to New Hampshire for campaign events. New Hampshire will hold its primary election next Tuesday. A federal judge has blocked the proposed merger between JetBlue and Spirit Airlines, Spirit losing 50 percent of its stock price as news broke. The judge on Tuesday siding with the Justice Department, which had sued to stop the $3.8 billion deal, saying it would harm competition and violate antitrust laws. The judge writing in his decision that JetBlue's plans to eliminate Spirit Airlines would harm cost-conscious travelers who rely on Spirit's low fares. The merger would have created the fifth largest airline in the country, a deal JetBlue said is needed to compete with bigger rivals. 
Both airlines are considering an appeal. Finally this morning, controversy over the age of the world's oldest dog ever has led Guinness World Records to suspend the title as the group reviews its findings. We have reported on Bobby before here on The Rundown. The reportedly 31-year-old guard dog was announced as both the world's oldest living dog and oldest dog ever back in February of 2023. Bobby died in October, but now months later, Guinness World Records says it received comments from a group of skeptical veterinarians questioning the dog's age. The publication says both records are on pause until the investigation is finished. These are your top stories for this Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe to the Morning Rundown newsletter to get the top stories each weekday morning. Just go to san.com rundown to sign up. Unbiased, straight facts, that's straight arrow news. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.